Hello. Uh, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Engineering Ninja. So as uh, discussed in introductory lecture, uh, introductory video, uh, we have started our module one of learning softwares. So we are learning Abacus in our module one. So uh, we, we, we have decided that we'll put two modules, two sub modules in each module. So this module one of Abacus will consist of a sub module, Abacus for beginners and then uh, advanced level. So here we are uh, starting our sub module that is Abacus, Abacus for beginners. Uh, so each, uh, each of the sub module will consist of small videos. Uh, so that it's easy for you to you know comprehend and understand so in this video we are going to look at the graphical user interface gui of abacus so we will learn various kinds of tools uh, that are there in the software and you know and how does a, a GUI of Abacus look like so but uh, before uh, you know proceeding uh, we need to download uh, the software and we need to install that as well so uh, I presume if if you have a, a licensed version of the Abacus well and good so but if you want to download and install Abacus on your PC or your uh, laptop. If you do not have the licensed version, I uh, I have shared two links uh, in the description. Please go through the description of the video. There are two links. One link is uh, that's regarding your downloading software, where uh, this link will lead you uh, to a site where you can download the software and. Second link is regarding installation. Installation of the software. If you follow this link, uh, this will guide you uh, for installing the software. So once uh, you're done with the installation of the software, I'll show you the icon that you're going to have on your desktop. Yeah. Abacus icon, Abacus CAE. This will appear on your desktop. Or if it's not appearing, but you're done with the installation, Please go to the, you know, this window, windows key and then type Abacus CAE. So you will see an icon like this. And uh, if you click on this, this will lead you to a window like this. And this is nothing. This is the graphical user interface of the Abacus. So uh, this video is meant to, uh, you know, make you aware. Uh, of this GUI of the Abacus. So these, there are just like any other software, there are, uh, you know, menu, there's menu bar. There are, these are the toolbars. This is a toolbar. And uh, this is known as module. It has various kinds of modules, part, property, assembly, step, interaction, load, mesh. And all these modules are, you can see here in model tree. This is called the model tree or the model da database. Suppose if this module, whatever I am modeling here, if it's named as model one, it will have all the, all these modules. Like, uh, if you can, if you see here, it has a parts, it has assembly. In the part itself, it has materials. When you create a part, you have to assign a material. You have to, you know, assemble those parts in the step you have to, uh, you know, say or tell it what type of analysis you want to run. And there are other things as well. And then at the end, you create a job for submission. So uh, we'll start modeling and uh, you know, analyzing some simple problems from the next video. But this video is meant to make you aware of these tools. So the way Abacus, the GUI has been designed, it becomes very easy, easy to, you know, uh, 
get started with it. Why? Because if you see here, what does it say? It says create a part. If you are suppose modeling a beam uh, or a bar, uh, suppose a beam bending problem. So you have to create a beam that you will do in this part, part material. Now you're done with you know creating a creating a beam. Then what is the next step? Property. You have to assign property to that beam. Once you create a beam, it's nothing. You don't call it a beam or you don't call it a what type of uh, what material it has. Uh, you don't say it's a concrete beam, it's a steel beam or it's uh, uh, you know composite kind of a structure. So in the part, it is just a geometry. But in the property, you create some property, you assign that property to that part. Then after you're done with that, you go to the assembly where you assemble various kinds of parts. If it's a single part, suppose a beam, it's a single part, you still need to go to the assembly and take that part to the assembly. But if for multiple parts, you need to take all the parts to that assembly, then assemble them using various kinds of tools are there like for translating one part to another part, you know, rotating. These are all those tools are there uh, where which we can you know perfectly create the geometry the final geometry then once we are done with the assembly now we are done with suppose uh, a beam it's uh, suppose it's a frame it's a frame let me show it here uh, like let me let me put it here suppose this is this is a frame that you want to analyze it's a 3d frame here i am using just a 2d so you will you will in the part itself you will need to create part one for this part two or you can name it part two for this column part three this is part three so you will have three parts in the part module right and once you go to the assembly, all these parts will be aligned like something like this. Then we have to make it like this using different kinds of tools. Right. Now we are done. We are done with the part. We are done with the property. We have assembled our parts and created the final shape of, you know, our structure. The next step is step. This is the very important, uh, you know, uh, step in in the whole analysis of any kind of problem in this step what we do is we we tell the software what type of analysis i am going to perform for this structure here you can see if it's is it static general you can also see how many types of analysis uh, are there in the general module it's you can perform coupled the temperature displacement. This is an advanced level of analysis. Coupled the thermal electric, dynamic cyclic, dynamic implicit, dynamic explicit, temperature di uh, displacement explicit type of analysis, geostatic, mass diffusion, general static, static RICS. And uh, I I would recommend you to you know have the uh, have the background because I assume. Uh, you already have the background of what is static general, what is explicit, implicit, what is the difference between static and dynamic a type of analysis, what is the difference between implicit and explicit. No matter, I will briefly describe that as well in the subsequent videos, wherein when we'll, uh, when we'll start, suppose, a dynamic implicit analysis, then there we'll, we'll explain what is this explicit and what is implicit type of analysis. What is static uh, general? What is linear? What is non-linear type of analysis? So this is a very important step. 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 What does it say? What? Which type of analysis I am going to run? And then interaction. Again, very important step. Now we had three parts, as I showed here. Three parts. I have just put them in this shape. 
But what type of interaction is there between this part and this part? What type of interaction is between this column and this B? All that is done in the interaction module. In this interaction module. Interaction module. Different types of interactions can be created. Uh, suppose uh, a reinforced beam is there. So there is has to be some interaction between, you know, reinforcement and concrete. So all the those things are done in interaction material. Then after you're done with the interaction, now we need to apply our loads. In the load itself, we can create various types of loads are there. Various types of loads. Since we have not created any kind of step and all, in the load module, we can create loads and then apply wherever we want, uh, depending upon our problem. And boundary conditions and as well. In the load module itself, there are two things, load and boundary conditions. Right. Suppose we have here, as an example, I put here, we have a fixed support here, fixed support at this column. So for that also creating that fixed fixity at the supports, we need to go to the load module. Now, see, we are done with the part. We have created parts, assigned properties, assembled them, you know, told the software which, which type of analysis we are going to run. Then interaction, which type of interaction we are going to do. Then load also. And then the mesh. We need to mesh those parts. We can mesh them as parts, separate parts, or we can mesh them as, you know, a whole assembly. In the assembly itself, we can mesh them or in the parts itself. Meshing is a very important feature of this software because it's based on finite element analysis or finite element method, right? So for that, Meshing plays a very important role. Depending upon the analysis as well, meshing has a role. So we will learn how do we mesh the parts. Then optimization, it's a different kind of a thing. We are not concerned with this. We're not going to deal with optimization. Then once we are done with everything, part, property, assembly, we have assigned loads, we have assigned mesh, then there's a job, job module. We go to the job module, we create a job. See here, we will name this job as suppose job one, like this. Then we continue. We tell it, uh, we tell the software how many, you know, processors do I need for the job to run and all. Then we say, okay. We go to here. It's already created job one. Here, what we do is we do a data check first. If we are sure about our assembly and all the kinds of uh, loading that we have applied, then no need to go for the loading at the data check. After data check, then we go to the submit button, wherein we submit the job. And then we can monitor the job and we ultimately, we have a status here. If we submit the job, and everything is okay, it will show up uh, running here and after running it will show completed. And then we go to the results, see the results, right? And uh, if there is some kind of an error, then we'll have a, here we will have about it. This will show about it, the job has been about it. And then we can also see, you know, different types of uh, what kind of error it had. Why has the job been aborted? So, uh, in the next video, what we are going to do is, uh, we are going to model and solve a beam bending problem. Right. Uh, I will take an example of a cantilever beam. This is for your reference of a span. Uh, say 5 meter and uh, we have a UDL on on this beam uh, let's say it's a 5 kilonewton 
per meter. Uh, please note it down. Uh, area of the cross section of the beam, I am assuming it to be as uh, uh, 0.3 meter or 300 mm. And here I am, I am assuming to be uh, 0.4 meter or 400 mm. Material of the beam is, uh, it is, it's a steel beam of rectangular cross section. It is 2 in, it's 10 power 5 Newton per mm square. That is the modulus of elasticity for steel. Uh, we'll assume uh, a Poisson's ratio mu equal to 0 0.03 for our convenience. So what we are interested in, this is actually the problem that we are going to solve. We are interested in uh, deflection, deflection at the free end. Free end, uh, let me name this as this is A, this free end is B. Right, this is uh, UDL. What is the deflection? at the free end and we will also see uh, what is the maximum bending or uh, flexural stress at A. So please, uh, please draw the bending moment and shear force diagram for this. Solve it, find what is Delta B analytically, you already know the solution. Right? It's, it's given. You can easily solve this. And M at A, bending moment, or rather, not the bending moment, uh, sigma at A, bending stress at, at A. So in the next video, I will first solve it analytically. I hope you'll you'll try it out and uh, come up with the answers then we will model the same problem uh, in abacus in abacus and we'll find uh, of course we'll find uh, this uh, deflection at b and stress at a stress at a and deflection at b so but uh, i'll i'll teach you uh, how to do this uh, you know in multiple ways we will we will model this as a 1d one dimensional uh, problem as well 1d b just like here it's it's nothing it's a one one dimensional one dimensional beam represented by a line and we are you know giving it a cross section rectangular cross section so we'll do it uh, two ways we'll do it as a 1d beam and then we'll create a 3d finite element model of the of the beam. We'll see. Uh, no, we'll compare our results. I hope uh, you've got a fair bit of idea about the GUI and what we are you know going to do from the next the next class from the next video. I hope uh, you know this this will help you getting started with with the abacus. Uh, by modeling this this beam, you will definitely, I'm sure you will definitely, you know, get started with the different types of the like uh, different tools of the of the software. You will get used to different kinds of tools. You will learn how different tools work. Okay, please uh, watch and uh, solve this problem, and be ready with the with the solution. Uh, this delta b and delta a and i thank you for you know being patient and watching this video i hope uh, you'll be there in the next video thank you so much see you in the next video